If you're ever in a situation where you need to tie a knot one-handed, but at the same time you want it to be quick release, this may be the knot for you. I have two loops of rope. If I interlock them, I can create a window. I can use that window to grab hold of another section of rope, and under the right circumstances, this makes for an excellent knot. Here's a scenario. You're climbing up a ladder or a tree and you need to tie off a rope, but you only have one hand to do it because your other hand is busy holding on for dear life. If you don't know what you're doing, you may end up with a knot that doesn't hold. And so here's something easy to remember. If I have access to my other hand, I'm gonna hold on and pull in some room. If I don't have access and can't safely use my hand, then I'm just going to bite onto the end of my rope with my teeth and I'll extend my arm out. And now I have the loop that I need. I'll place it behind my anchor point and I'll place my thumb through and I'll use my thumb like a knitting needle. I'm gonna reach through, hook onto those two strands and thread them through that first loop. I wanna do that again, but right now my thumb is pointing at me. So I'm gonna rotate my thumb clockwise and I'll do that same motion and pull the strands through again. All that's left to do is take the standing end and I'll let the knot spill into place. So I'll just keep pulling that, watch what happens when it spills into place. If I zoom in, you can see what I showed you earlier. Remember the opposing loops that I showed you with the green and blue rope? Well, here they are again. And in that window is this bite. Now I can pull on this all I want. It's not gonna come loose. The rope will break before the knot does. And if I want to undo it, I simply need to pull on my free end here. Now let's say you're in a hurry or there's low visibility and you can't tell whether or not your opposing loops have fallen into place. The knot will still hold. But in my experience, at least with paracord, if you're tying this one-handed knot, it almost always falls into place. It may be a little difficult to see, but here we have one loop and then the opposing loop is right here. Now let's see how fast I can do this. Get ready, get set, and go. Go around, hook, twist, pull through, and yank on the standing end, and we're set. This will hold just fine. If you don't believe me, we'll ask the tiebreaker here soon. And then when we're all done, we simply set it free. For this test, we're using quarter inch Paramax. On this side, it looks like we're still here. Definitely snapped. Over here we have what's left of our one-handed knot, and then our anchor is still intact. During this matchup, you can see that the tiebreaker lost. In fact, that tensionless hitch got ripped right out. You can see the safety gates bent open. Over here, we're still intact, but I wonder if it's still quick release. Let's give it a shot. All right, for the ultimate showdown here, we have a one-handed hitch tied to both the anchor bar and the hook. So here's what's so cool about this knot. If you look way down there, we have our hook that broke free. It lost at that smaller diameter there. It stayed put over here. Well, let's see if we can still pull this free and see if the quick release is still working. Let's see, where's the, uh... there's our sanding in right there. How about that? Now, if the rope is thicker, you may not be able to pull it through so easy with your thumb. In that case, you may have to use some dexterity, but the same actions apply. You can see the opposing loops there, and here's the bite being held within. This one is from Cislo out of Michigan. Let's see what we got here. Whoa, look at this. Holy cow. 
That's cool. Oh, there's something else. All right, let's read the letter first. I love this kind of stuff. This kind of stuff you can't buy. It's an old axe handle that comes around maybe from the 1900s. And he wrapped it in some cord, made a bottle opener out of it. So cool. And he also included some Petoskey stone, which is old coral, petrified coral, or fossilized coral, rather. That comes from the region. I don't want to break it. I don't know how fragile it is. Oh, look at that. You can see the coral there in the stone. Man. And he told me in the letter that over the course of 350 million years, the weight of a glacier and the dirt, oil, and sand, they slowly impact to create this. This is something that he hand polished himself. How cool is that? Thank you. What? <laughs> All right, you guys are not going to believe what I'm about to pull out of this box. This is from Thomas from uh, Columbus, Ohio. I don't even know how to react to this. This is going to be awesome. Look at this. So this is a Tibetan Buddhist meditation bell. Man, look at the detail in the uh, the casting work. Let's zoom in there. Never in a million years did I think I'd be holding one of these. That is amazing. All right, we have a name. It's Big Mac Sam. He has his YouTube channel. Check it out here. He actually made a video about this, so I'm going to go check that out here soon. <laughs> so this is something he found while he was at a hospital in Long Island. Oh, look at this. Keep or hide? Hashtag Long Island Rocks. I'm guessing that's, that, that's what it means. 62921. Thank you, Big Mac Sam. Your box is on its way. All right, this one is from Michael in Seattle, Washington. Rains an awful lot there. So much that they have grass growing on the roof. <laughs> Let's plot the letter first. How cool is that? So Michael has sent some reflective suspenders. That's really cool. Oh look, it turns into a belt. Looks like it separates. And this can be added into clothing. Or maybe we'll make a future video on how to tie webbing. Nice. Thank you, Michael.